Hey everybody, Kevin here again, and uh, I've got my good friend Dave Franicky on. And uh, David, like a lot of investors who own notes and portfolios and things like that, you go through um, well times where you want to raise capital, times where you want to liquidate assets, reinvest, etc. And uh, I was talking with David recently, and he's got a, a great technique that is probably very underutilized. But once you hear it, you're kind of like, ah, oh, that makes complete sense. So uh, he, I think you'll really enjoy this uh, for those of you who have a portfolio of notes and you're looking to get some capital. So Dave, thanks for being on my friend. Thank you, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Just fine. Good to see you. Yes. So tell us, uh, uh, give us a little background on this because I'm sure there's other investors in your same situation and I think they'll have a little aha moment. So kind of tell us what brought you to this idea and jump right into it. Okay. Back in September, October, November, I bought a bunch of little notes with small balances, uh, you know, payments remaining, whether it be from 15 to 35 payments remaining. And a lot of times you say, gee, I don't know if I want to deal with that. Yeah, well, I'm short term. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then with all this stuff going on, I'm thinking there's going to be some good opportunities out there. So I could resell those notes at a steep discount, or I could go to the homeowners and suggest to them, I sent them a letter. In this case, there were 10 letters that went out and said, hey, you guys can own your house. You owe $10,000. If you give me $8,500 in the next 30 days, I'll forgive that $1,500 and you own it. So three people raised their hand and, and they were just bouncing off the wall. How can I do this? That's awesome. How, how many letters went out? I'm sorry. I went out 10, sent out 10 letters. Right. And you didn't have to go through. So this isn't like you have to go through a servicing company or no. any of that. You're just reaching out to your borrowers, right? That's exactly right. Cause I, I, try to maintain some form of communication with my borrowers over and above the service companies anyway, because I find it, it works better in the long run for me. Mm -hmm. the way I do it. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense for them to do that, right? So you're giving them a break on the discount. Of course, you're making money and, and getting the capital that you need. Uh, did you get any negative responses? No, they didn't, they didn't think it was true. <laughs> we don't, we, why would somebody give us free money with no strings attached? I mean, some of them went so far as to call the servicer and say, is this guy for real? <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, one more time, I, and I, I was just kind of thinking of some other, a couple of other thoughts there. But So you sent out 10 letters, and how many have responded so far? Three. Three, and three have done it so far. Actually, four responded, three have done it. Three have already done it, and uh, the fourth. And then the other ones you just didn't hear from yet, or – they just work uh, positions. So I'll let them sit. I'll probably pay them again. I'll give them a couple months, wait yeah. for things to settle out in the economy. And so, so, so far, just one letter. Them. Yeah, you one only letter. sent one letter. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's. It was just a little invitation style envelope, little blue envelope, folded up a piece of paper into fourths, and made it real personal and gave the example. Hmm. And the, um, the gist of it was essentially this is what you owe and how long it would take, but here's the offer. And you did you name numbers or did you? I did. Sounds I like you did. Yeah. I said you owe ten thousand dollars. If you pay this off by May first, you will owe eighty five hundred dollars, and I'll forgive fifteen hundred. And some people might say, "Well, why are you doing that?" Well, because I bought them right. You right. know, you know, Kevin. When a when a note pays off earlier, yield goes way high. So on some of these, just by doing that, I had yields of one hundred and sixty percent. On those little small, yeah, uh, yeah few little payments left. Up. That's a, that's that's. I mean, again, once once somebody hears this, you're like, well, of course I could have done that. But I bet you there's not a whole lot of people that have ever thought about or, d or did what you did. There's got to be a good story in there. Uh, did what did you hear from some of the people that call you up? Or well, yeah, one actually, well, two of them were really really unique. One gentleman lived in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, he had a contract for deed that he was assigned to him via quit claim. He didn't even, so back in, I guess that would have been October of last year, he didn't know if he could even keep the place because the paperwork was so messy. So we, so here he is in October. We transitioned that contract for deed into a mortgage. We put his wife on it. One big strike. He loved it. And then with that, just by doing that, he prepaid a couple thousand dollars. And then I came back to them, to him maybe a month and a half later, if you can prepay the rest of this, we'll forgive this and you own it. So he goes from October of 19, not knowing if he even is in the house legally, till in March of 20, he owns it free and clear. Wow. I mean, what a gratifying story. 
<laughs> That's awesome. And he's going to give me a testimonial video. Yeah, I was just going to say, I said, man, you should get a testimonial because you could pop that in your other marketing letters, you know, yep. and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's awesome. Yeah, and you know, it's just it, it's it's amazing when there's open communication, right? I mean, that's when things can get done. I mean, everybody's struggling with with uh, getting notes reperforming, and 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 people maybe not having the ability to pay because they've lost their job or something like that. I, you know, I've been telling people be proactive about it. Reach out there to people. You don't want them to fall into default and then also fall into silence, right? Right. But what's unique, Kevin? So I gave a little bit of money away. Who cares? That what because I got my principal back, well, I made a lot of well, a significant return on it, I'll find another deal and more than make up for the discount that I gave away. Right. So it's a total win win. And yeah. that's cliche ish, but it's true. Man, that's a great, simple, straightforward technique. I do like the extra hint that you had in there where you go above and beyond the communication with your borrowers. Um uh you know, above and beyond the servicing company. I, I kind I kind of like that. Um, just real quick, because we're running out of time. But what do you what do you mean by that? Expand upon that a little bit. You send like a, a, a Christmas card kind of communication, no, or you send it, something it, on a. No, it's it's totally selfish. A lot of times, I don't know if they really have insurance, so you could rely upon the servicer. So I send them a letter and ask about their insurance, and then I call them, hmm. and we interact that way. So whether I have to get forced place, or they may have already have their own declaration page and have their own. But I established that. But at the end of it, I say, if there's ever any challenge with your mortgage, I work for the owner of this, for, you know, for the company. Call me. So they know me. And you, so you're establishing that relationship, that one-on-one -on -one relationship, which has lost so much in the way society works today. Yeah. You know, it's funny as my, my instructor head is thinking as you're saying that, I can almost see the hands go up in the, in the audience of, wait a minute, don't you need a license? He's not collecting a debt, folks. He's not calling to collect a debt. He's calling to communicate and, and check and verification. That's all totally fine. You don't need a servicing company to, to do any of that. No, I like it. I like it and a lot. The second one, Kevin, real quick, was in South Carolina. So the lady waited a month before she responded. I said, that's okay. So I reworked the numbers and I gave her three options, three pay lines. So she went to her retirement fund and pulled the money out of that. And again, <laughs> She had just remarried, so I'm able to put her husband on the deed, and she owns her home free and clear. No worry about anything. Wow. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, David. Where can people find you again? Capstone U.S.? No, Capstone Capital. Help me out. Yeah, they can go to Capstone Capital USA. Uh, on there, I do have a, a, an area that says free stuff. There's a note holder's handbook. It's instructional. It's kind of like ties into what you do. And then I'll also, of course, I buy notes. Mm -hmm. So there's a page on there, a squeeze page, where people have notes that they want to sell. I'd love to talk to them. Fantastic. And if you're in the Arizona area and you're not a part of his meetup, you should be. So look into that uh, as well. David, thank you so much for taking out some time and being with us today. And Kevin, that meetup is Note Investors Forum. Note Investors Forum. That's a website? Yes. Yep. Okay. It's a meetup too. Yeah. Nope. Right. investorsforum.com. You got it. Correct. Thanks again, Dave. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it.